we're acquainted because, uh, you know, both of you guys are awesome. And, and Aaron, of course, the, the bassist <laughs> from YNT and uh, now venturing into the solo realm. And we had him on to talk about um, his new uh, solo single, which is Live For Today. Go to AaronLee.com and you can get it. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. AaronLee.com. Uh, head over there and there's other music to listen to. And uh, it's where it all happens, man, for me anyway. Yeah. And, of, and of course, our other esteemed panelist, it is Chuck Shoot, my good buddy. The Chuck Shoot podcast is available where all the podcasts are. I hate to say it, Chuck, but a lot of times you, you've sort of like risen to the top and a lot of times you overtake on the road to rock because you're that damn good, man. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, man. No, you're such an inspiration. I listened to a lot of your episodes for research and I, I, I learn a lot about the guests that I interview from you. So thank you for that. Dude, that's, that's awesome. This is so yeah. cool. This is uh, what I like to call an old school uh, album clash. It is Wasp, the debut 1984 versus The Last Command for I think maybe it could be all three of us. This may not even be much of a contest as I kind of, you as we go track by track, this is a great opportunity because both albums have 10 tracks on it. And you can just line it up and go down the line. So this is going to be really cool. Aaron, I guess I'll start with you. Like, what was kind of your genesis for, for Wasp? You're a West Coast guy. You're from the Bay Area. You, Wasp, you know, comes, comes along kind of out of the ashes of the band's uh, sister. Blackie Lawless and Randy Piper form Wasp. They've been around forever. They kind of come out of the LA Sunset Strip scene and, and kind of explode from there. What was your kind of memory of of Wasp uh, kind of when they first came out, were you aware of them at, at that point? Well, I was, uh, I was in a glam band called Sleaze in, uh, in the eighties. And so I was already into the whole glam thing, man. I mean, it, it, we were full on. I, I looked like if I had a sister, that would be my sister, me, you know? Uh, but <laughs> I, I came across Wasp just through, uh, you know, being into uh, that sort of, uh, music at the time and the look and all that I was just thumbing through records and I saw the cover of the debut record and I just immediately took it and ran off with it and that was my discovery of Wasp so um, it, and that happened quite a bit with, with in that time period it was the record covers that sold it to me you know but uh, you know in 1984 when that record came out um, that was at the top of the heap for me because it was it was glam but it was heavy you know, sure. it, was it was glam metal is what it was. Uh, Chuck, kind of same question to you. Where, where did you become aware of Wasp? But, you know, I'm younger. I'm only 37. So for me, it was like, you know, I think I caught maybe Wild Child on, on MTV and just kind of that was it for me. But for Chuck, how, how did you come across Wasp in your life, man? Yeah, I mean, I think I just when I started getting into rock, it was around like 92. And so like for me, it was more like Skid Row and Guns N' Roses and stuff. And so then I kind of backtracked. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, I start hearing about Wasp, all this Wasp stuff. So I think I got, I want to say it was either their greatest hits or like greatest hits live or something like that. And so that's where I learned a lot of the songs. And I mean, when you have song titles like Fuck Like a Beast and stuff like that, I mean, you're just like, you know, as a 13 or 14 year old kid, you're like, you're drawn to that. Like, whoa, that's, that's kind of, you're not supposed to say that word. What is this? And so, you know, it's kind of a dangerous and exciting. And so, yeah, they're definitely heavy. Well, that's interesting you bring up uh, Animal Fuck Like a Beast because that song does not wind up on the debut album, which was released August 17th, right. 1984. Um, if, if, but if it's on the song, reissue. Does that, that doesn't count? It, I'm going with the original, the original release. 10 songs versus 10 songs. I'm taking Animal out of it because it was not on the original pressing and it was, there's obviously a lot of controversy around the PMRC and the, the dirty dozen or whatever it was. And sure. so it doesn't make the album. If it does, this is an absolute landslide. I mean, what a great mm -hmm. song that was. I mean, and wasp now blackie is sort of like found the Lord and like, doesn't perform the song live right. anymore. Have you guys, either of you ever seen wasp live? No, I haven't. Wow. Yeah, Aaron? no, I, I, uh, I went to go see Kiss. I think it was on the Asylum tour. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was the Asylum tour and Wasp was opening and I was in a big hurry to get down there and I missed them. So I've, I've wow. never seen Wasp. And from what, from what I hear too is uh, Blackie doesn't like to tour the US. He'll, he'll keep it in Europe. So every time Y&T oh. goes over to, to uh, tour Europe, I always look at the tour dates for Wasp and see if anything's coming up to try to you know, cross over and go check them out. Well, I have seen Wasp live once. It was on the ill-fated Neon God tour in 2004 here in Columbia, Missouri at the Blue Note. It was still one of the best shows I've ever seen. I think, you know, 
that was around the time that Blackie had that huge mic stand and was like canceling a lot of shows because this mic stand wasn't fitting in clubs on club stages. And this was just a real mm. strange time. And I think that that the promoters in the U S have sort of, you know, kind of washed them their hands of wasp. A lot of dates were canceled on that tour. It would just, uh, but I mm. was fortunate enough to get to see it. And that's my lone wasp memory. They haven't toured the U S since then. That was Oh four. That's 17 years ago. So not a lot. So wait, did he do the fuck like a beast song then or no? Uh, yes. Yeah. That was yes. Oh, he did. Yeah. Mm. So he did. Why couldn't they change the lyrics now and just say like, make it like pray like a beast or something. I mean, (laughs) if you want to hear the melody and the, uh, so many wasp songs have these very, you know, very religious, you know, based. I mean, if you've listened to the unholy terror album, we kill fuck die. I mean, uh, headless children, they're very aggressive and very, a lot of, yeah. So I don't know why that one specifically just other than just, fuck in the title um <laughs> kind of as we get kind of rolling along here comparing the albums the album covers uh, let's start there aaron you talked about how awesome the debut is i don't think it can be topped the last command has just uh, that uh, classic look of blackie kind of planting the wasp flag i don't think it gets better than than the original um album cover just you got the what the kind of stage looked like back then if you've ever seen live at the lyceum that's just sort of the stage that i remember with the kind of the torture stuff in the background and whips and chains and Blackie's chain mic and just all awesome. You see that cover. I'm just, I'm in that's to me, no, no debate. That's the better cover. Yeah. I'm going to have to roll with that one as well. I mean, they're both great, you know, but I like the band shot of all four of them Yeah, and, and the, the fog and all that has just got that vibe, you know? So I'll go with uh, the debut on that one for the cover. Chuck, you agree? I think the last command covers cooler. It's more original. I feel like that the debut, it's a little bit too, it looks too similar to Motley Crue. Don't you think like the shot of the devil? Not that that was a cover, but I feel like there's pictures of them with that kind of, I don't know. Yeah. It's sort I, of the same vibe going on there. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a good point. It is more original. I just think that that one is what I think of that era of wasp that, that just stands out. And like Blackie was probably the first thing I ever knew of wasp kind of like D Snyder's the first thing you st- probably a lot of you know people knew of twisted sister just stay hungry and you see the person and you associate it so that that's another thing i think they're maybe moving more towards that because the lineup had changed guys when the original uh 1984 uh, debut comes out you know their uh tony richards is on drums that would later change to steve riley uh who went on to be in la guns of course but Blackie Lawless, Chris Holmes, Randy Piper, Tony Richards. That's the original lineup on the 1984 debut. And we start with uh, two songs. This is already so unfair that I can't really, this is just very tough to do and it's just not fair. And by the way, when we do this, this is so much to have fun. We love this band. We like comparing this. It's, It's hard to even pick, you know, sometimes which album is better from a band, but this is just us kind of self-indulging and having fun with it. So with that said, we have two amazing leadoff tracks. I want to be somebody from the debut versus the last command wild child. Aaron, let's start with you. Who wins this one for you? Well, this is going to be a running theme through this whole thing is <laughs> hands down. It's it's going to be, I want to be somebody. I mean, just the way it rips out of the speakers, man. I mean, Hey, nothing against last command, great song, great opening track. Uh, but just the power and, and just that washing over of, of wasp, man. First time hearing that you'll be a fan right there. Chuck, what do you think, man? Between those two, yeah, I mean, I think I want to be somebody. It's just a catchier song. It's a, uh, it's better. It's interesting though. I did, I did learn today that the Wild Child song. I don't know if you guys knew this that he, uh, Blackie tried to give that one to Nikki Six, but Nikki Six, that's a rumor that, that he said no. Vince, Vince's range can't sing that song, so that's why Wasp kept it. I guess. That's interesting, and I'm gonna kind of buck the trends here. I'm going Wild Child. To me, maybe really? it's just my memory, my memories of of discovering Wasp that video, the desert video. And I, I, I like the video better for wild child for one um, as kind of a, you know, not just a strictly performance video. Wild child is a quintessential wasp. This is uh, an MTV hit. Um, they had only two singles on the last command. Wild child's one of them to me. It's the most recognizable song, but it's never soured it for me. So many hits from, from that era, we get soured on how many times can you hear pour some sugar on me around and round and stuff. But to me, wild child, 
is the winner here. And I, I guess I'm standing on, alone on here because I and I love, I love I want to be somebody. Wild Child wins it for me. So I'm alone on this one. <laughs> uh, so I, they're, 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 right, they're, exactly. Um, n- next, we have another an, one that's maybe not quite as hard because uh, Love Machine uh, versus Ball Crusher. And for me, a love machine is uh, just, again, essential from that era. You watch that live at the Lyceum from 1984. It just hits hard. Uh, that chorus, L-O-V-E, that's going to be a pattern on, on this uh, debut, by the way, spelling words out. Uh, love machine. <laughs> I, I like ball crusher. It's, it's, it's really hard hitting as well. And you got that, like that chorus, bye, 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 ball crusher. Love that. But um, kind of hits you over the head, but love machine to me chuck what say you well see i gotta read these lyrics from ball crusher just for this this little part where it's like <laughs> the hellraiser finally finally pushed her luck before i go leave her in the dust i'm gonna fuck her till she can't stand up i mean it's hard to go against that it is but, uh, i do think that uh love machine is a catchier song so yeah i'm gonna go with love machine and and chuck you you left out some of these other lyrics to uh, the mighty ball crusher <laughs> which is a lesbo nymphomaniac. Ooh, she's got a girlfriend that's 17. So, you know. I don't know if the PMRC was against these guys. Well, what's up with that? That's so yeah, strange. yeah. You know, don't let these guys hang out around a uh, elementary school by any means <laughs> or, or high school. Um, so, <laughs> well, with that being said, I mean, Ball Crusher, this is quintessential Blackie Lawless lyricism at its finest. But I'm going to have to go with Love Machine. Yeah, I, I mean, Love Machine is it's, it's a staple of the live set today. You don't hear Ball Crusher really played live. Um, and so it's kind of lived on uh, here. So that's, that's, I think that that definitely is a kind of an easy one. Uh, the next one is uh, The Flame, which I love the, kind of the sneering blacky vocals here. Uh, it's a great chorus in that until the flame burns out, like chorus is, is so awesome. Fistful of Diamonds has never been a huge fan of that one. Uh, kind of a forgettable track, and it's so early in the album. It's the third track. Um, and Chris Holmes' solo on here is probably my favorite part of Ball Crusher. Aaron, let's go to you. I think I know where you're going to go here. Probably going to go with The Flame, I'm guessing. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll go with The Flame. I, just what a strong chorus, you know? It's just, it, it it's the quintessential Wasp, man. And, and this is going to be the running thing with me is that that debut record is, it's hard to beat that. I mean, they they really captured lightning in a bottle with that. Um you know, and and another thing is, you know, Chris Holmes' lead playing on both records, you know, the records that he played on. I mean, it's always it was always great. But when I went back and you asked me to, to get on here with you guys, I went back and I started listening to both these records. And Chris Holmes was a beast, man, yeah. literally. I mean, that guy, he had some serious, serious chops, man. I think he's a very underrated player. But um, yeah, the flame, man. That's a great, that's one of the most underrated Wasp songs to me is The Flame. Chuck, what do you think, man? Yeah, I mean, I agree. The Flame is a catchier song. It is interesting, too, The Fistful of Diamonds, though, how it's, that one's actually not about sex. It's about money and fame and glory and all that. So it's kind of, it's kind of a, a different take for them. But uh, yeah, I think <laughs> overall, just The Flame's a, a better tune. Yeah, I, 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 and The Flame is one that it doesn't, it hasn't really had a lot of staying power in the Wasp catalog. It didn't make any really greatest hits albums or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I do. I do think better song here. I'm going to start with you, Aaron, on this one. Uh, bad. Um, I, I, big fan of bad versus Jack action. I guess we, I guess we already know what the theme is for you. Is, are, are any last command songs going to win here? We got bad versus Jack action. How's it yeah. play out? Well, well, when, as we get a little deeper, um, Last Command has has some stuff on there that that I would prefer, but uh, you know, I'm gonna go with, of course, Bad. I I have to. Um, killer Chorus again, you know, and and then you've you've got the first, you know, four or five songs out of the gate are just ripping your face off. You know, every song has just got that the hooks, the the lead playing, the attitude, you know. Yeah, bad for me. Chuck, what do you say, man? What's interesting about bad to me is like the riff. I noticed today that it, it kind of reminded me of ACDC Hell's Bells a little bit. I hadn't thought of that. 
Yeah, I don't I know. For that. Some re- I, so that that uh, that stood out. It's still a great song. Um, but I'll give this one to Jack Action just because it's it's co it's the only song co-written by Steve Riley. And you know, he he was nice enough to do my podcast, so I give him a shout out here. And uh and just like I, the lyrics again, these lyrics are you know, looking for my jack action, my satisfaction. And I mean, what what is he talking about? <laughs> What was he talking about with that? Like, and what what part did Steve Riley help write those lyrics? Or like, what was his contribution? It's intriguing. I, I do know that Jack Action is is a, just a huge kind of guilty pleasure wasp song for me. Uh, kind of similar to Ball Crusher, and that it's just really hard hitting and aggressive. Like right off the bat, it just jumps out. Um, so I, for me, Jack Action uh, wins this one as well. So, I mean, I. I like bad. Uh, I love that chorus uh, spelling. Again, we're spelling out a word and then uh, B A D make your mom and daddy sad. Well, I guess that's, you know, I guess what that's about. We're not quite to the sadomasochism part of uh, wasps debut yet. We are heading in that direction, uh, which leads us to uh, the middle of the pack here. We got school days uh, off the debut versus widow maker. I am a huge sucker guys for school rebellion songs such as mm-hmm. be cruel to your school by twisted sister school yes. etc i love school days uh from wasp and Widowmaker. i like it's more brooding you get that kind of slow building intro but man i'm going with school days I, again i'm a sucker for school rebellion aaron what say you <laughs> well you know school days <laughs> Uh, I mean, I was in high school. I think I was in ninth grade at the time, you know, so uh, and, and I especially love the part with the, the school bell, the, the little, you know, bell ringing in, in the song and stuff. But yeah, man, uh, school days all the way. Chuck, what are we thinking here? Yeah, say, I'm just going to echo everything you guys say the school days. Uh, I mean, I do. We're, it's talking the other ones, Widowmaker, right? Is that the one we're going? Yeah, yeah. School days and Widowmaker. Yeah. I like Widowmaker. <laughs> It's got that spooky slow intro and that's kind of cool. But yeah, overall, I think uh, School Days is a better song. I One thing that kind of I'm noticing here is that, you know, I'd never really just taken both albums and listened to them like against each other or kind of back to back. There's something about, and I don't know, if, uh, you know, how much Randy Piper, I think Randy Piper was, you know, obviously more of kind of the, the rhythm player on a lot of this, but there seemed, I think Chris Holmes maybe had a slightly different guitar tone on the debut. It just had a little more raw raunchiness to it. This, the, this, it was a little more produced, a little more, a little less edgy. And, and even though it was still hard hitting and, and, and great, I just think that the guitar tone was a little different for me. Aaron, did you notice anything like that? Do you, do you see that? Well, the first album, the debut record was, I guess, either co-produced or produced. I know Blackie's listed as producer, uh, but Mike Varney was uh, also doing some production on the debut record. Um, There's something very raw about those guitars on the debut record, opposed to a little more polished sound on Last Command, you know, and Mike Varney didn't have anything to do with that. And we all know that Mike Varney's a guitar guy, you know, so. Interesting. uh, yeah, I think there's something something there. Yeah, I do too. Um, let's go with side two. Now we flip the sides over on the record and you've got Hellion, which is just an awesome pounding song. I think Tony Richards playing on this. It's the only Wasp album he appeared on was really underrated. I love that kind of drum yeah. uh, intro to Hellion. But then we have Blind in Texas, which is really the first time you get that dirty Southern kind of bluesy a riff from Chris Holmes. Uh, this is only this is the second single and uh, from from Last Command. I gotta go with Blind in Texas here. Am I alone, Chuck? No, definitely Blind in Texas is it's probably one of the best Wasp songs written in my opinion. Like it's catchy. It's what like as a kid when I bought that CD. That's just definitely one of those ones that I remember the chorus and stuff. Uh, but it is you know what's impressive about Hellion is that long yell that he does. That's got to be hard to sing live. Did he, I'm guessing they probably don't do that song live very much though. So. Probably not. That was uh, around that time though. It was, and his vocals were always spot on on that. I love that. Yeah. Hell yeah. So you're, so you are blind in Texas, Aaron. I just have a, I have a prediction here, but I'm going to let you spell it out for us here. What, what's well, it going to be? Uh, I, I, I'm going to have to go with the majority here and I'm going Ooh. with blind in Texas. Uh, of course, you know, hell yeah, just ripping again. Great. Just everything about it. But uh, Blind in Texas had a really cool video. So at yes. the time, you know, I was I was really every time it would come on MTV, man, I was just like glued to the TV. You know, uh, I love the breakdown with the the banter between uh, the bartender and Blackie. You know, so yeah, it, it's a uh, I'm going with uh, Blind in Texas, man. Well, yeah, the video was shot in Arizona at, at Old Tucson. 
Oh, awesome. Yeah. I wondered, uh, was Wild Child as well? Or was that probably California? Possibly. That looked maybe California for that or, one. Yeah. Both, both very desert. I like those kind of deserty vibes, yeah. you know, like it just, that's why I like Wild Child so much. Um, do you feel like Last Command, Aaron, like was, we saw Wasp transition and it's almost like you saw what they became on Inside the Electric Circus, which I still love that album. It's obviously very glam. You want a glam metal album, that's it. But this is, it's almost like, Last Command was sort of transitioning to that. Is that kind of how you guys see it? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. It was, I think that they started to find some commercial success in Last Command and they were just trying to repeat that and push it a little more, you know, with the production. Yeah, I could see that. It just, it, and I and I love that. And, and then it's crazy because they go on to do Headless Children and uh, The Idol and Kill Fuck Die and like a totally different direction yet. So those are some albums we could do at some point too because I love Headless Children and uh, The Idol. Certainly those are both tremendous. But as we move on here, I think this has got, it can't be by accident. We have the two ballads, Sleeping in the Fire versus Cries in the Night. To me, Sleeping in the Fire, it's the first sense we get that Black, Blackie is just an absolutely excellent top of the line songwriter his ballads are criminally underrated and we'll see that later with songs like forever free hold on to my heart and cries in the night as well of course on last command but that that chorus take taste the love the lucifer's magic that makes you numb and if you've seen that live at the lyceum you got chris holmes like it doesn't even really fit the tone of the song he's like on his knees like head banging to that core and it's <laughs> fucking awesome sleeping in the fire wins and that's one of my favorite songs of all time wow Sorry, that was that was aggressive. Chuck, try to yeah. follow that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I think that's a it's a more original, better title. Title sleeping in the yeah. fire than cries in the night is just so. Uh, like I don't know what cries in the night's like, about. Like you're yeah. right, you know, like I couldn't figure that out either. So yeah, I would I would go I would go with sleeping in the fire. Aaron, what do we think? Yeah, I'm going with sleeping in the fire. Uh, Chris Holmes' lead at the end is just incredible. Uh, he's doing some kind of like a pick tap thing, you know, as it's fading out and it, it's just, it's brilliant, man. Yeah. I, I think that that would become something that I, I don't think Wasp gets enough notoriety for. I, I think that those, the, the ballads and the, the, and they're not, of course, with Wasp, as you would expect, they're not traditional love ballads. They are introspective. They are, I mean, you look at the idol is just this whole, you know, uh, concept album and based on the rise of a false prophet and so many themes that you see throughout Wasp's career. And they still make great ones to this day. Uh, I think their last album was Golgotha and they had this, uh, they had, no, they just, Blackie keeps turning them out. He's got a gift for it. Chuck, you agree? Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Are you talking about the ballads? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, criminally underrated to me songwriting and songwriting yeah I, I, well wasp in general i feel like is a little bit under it's not, it's not one of those bands that you think about a lot it doesn't you know they don't get talked about enough so it's interesting that you wanted to do i was like oh that's a cool idea because yeah this is not a band that and probably too because blackie doesn't do a lot of inter interviews right now or anything oh no that's uh that's one that chuck both you and i'll probably take that one to our grave will we not i, I feel like if it ever happens we got to team up on it because it's one once in a lifetime yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, uh, so Cries in the Night still a really good song, I think. I think it's um, a, a step back from Sleeping in the Fire, but you got both ballads, and uh, you know, as the seventh track, I think that was can't be by accident, right? I mean, mm -hmm. so let's see. We are now heading to the eighth, which we got The Last Command, the title track of, uh, of The Last Command, taking on On Your Knees, I can't even, this doesn't even dignify uh, really a breakdown because On Your Knees is one of my favorite Wasp songs ever. It's in my top five. They use, they've used this as their opener since 1984. And if you think back to that 1985, I guess it would have been, uh, Armored Saint, Metallica, and Wasp, when Wasp was on top of their game and headlining over all, all of those bands. On Your Knees is the first thing that you hear Wasp blaring out to. On Your Knees is freaking awesome. Very sexual song, as we've come to know and expect as we get to sort of the sadomasochistic part of the, uh, <laughs> of the album and um, last commands, just okay. It's decent. It go you know, kind of goes back to like kind of the fistful of diamonds from the earlier and Jack action feel from side one. Um, but no chance against on your knees, Aaron. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm going to agree with you on your knees. You know, the last command, it's not that it's a bad song. It's just kind of just, it, it's a song. It, it seems like filler to me, even though it's the title track. I don't know. I don't even think it was worth being the title track, honestly. But yeah, uh, yeah, on your knees, man. I mean, how can you disagree with on your knees, oh. on your knees? <laughs> I mean, yeah. you go all kinds of directions with that one, man. It's brilliant. <laughs> Chuck, what do you think? Well, I mean, there's only two things that you can do on your knees, and I don't think they're talking about praying. <laughs> so, I mean, they must be talking you about- can't rule that out. Kyle, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, Rocky's but, a religious you know, guy, though, now, you know? That's right. We can't so rule that out. Maybe they could change that. Again, they could change his lyrics up a little bit, and they could uh, put it in the show. But uh, no, yeah, great song, Last Command. Again, it's a good point. Why didn't they call the- album after one of the better songs like blind in texas or i think that would have been a better something to you know more promote one of the better songs that i don't know it's always interesting how they choose title tracks for for albums uh and not only that but wasp debut was going to be was it winged assassins i think it was Ooh. originally called winged assassins which Kinda i think cool. would have been i think that would have been awesome yeah i wish they would have done that you know and because debut albums when you have just a self-titled if it is going to occur i always prefer it to be a you know a debut you know van halen one led zeppelin one, you know on and on like so wasp one <laughs> wasp debut i mean but winged assassin that would have been awesome i think for sure that's a cool name yeah that that would have been uh, interesting i'm not sure if it was a record uh, probably a record uh, company decision at, at that point um so we are uh, almost done here we got number nine uh, which is running wild in the streets this is a huge throwaway song from last command not one that i've it's got a decent chorus um kind of catchy not the biggest fan of that but tormentor okay guys so tormentor really has a huge place in my heart of course wasp themselves appeared in the 1984 film the dungeon master and performed the song in the movie and I just, this is like one of my earliest memories as, as a kid, like before I knew what music was, like I remember seeing this horrible movie and Wasps in it. <laughs> the themes of sadomasochism, Chris Holmes' guitar work uh, to start the song. And it's like, he's almost soloing the riff to start with. I freaking love that. I'm just a huge mark for this song. Tormentor's badass. Chuck, take it from here. Yeah, I mean, I just, the lyrics of Tormentor, I'm a liar, I'm a cheat, I have no morals and I'm a thief, pillage and plunder, curse those who enter, I'm a killer and a tormentor. I mean, my only question is, how did he write a song about my ex-girlfriend before she was born? <laughs> just like so weird to me. Um, we won't tell her that you said that. Um, yeah, but, uh, but no, but then, then run, running wild in the streets, this reminds me, he had to have been on drugs when he wrote this. It just sounds like a drug inspired tune. But you know, it's interesting, <laughs> it was, it was co-written by Spencer Proffer, who produced that album, who's like a legendary, prolific producer. Uh, so... Uh, that's kind of interesting that that wasn't um, a bigger hit or a better song, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not a big fan of the running wild in the streets. I think yeah. that was probably, uh, you know, it was later on in the, in the album or the cassette, I should say. And then, uh, you know, I, I would probably pull it at that point. But um, <laughs> yeah, torment. Tormentor all the way, man. You know, again, that debut record just embodies a whole thing. I mean, it's it's perfect, you know. Can't get uh, around perfection, man. I, absolutely. And kind of the same theme for the, for the last track, which is The Torture Never Stops versus Sex Drive, which I, I, I think Sex Drive from Last Command is actually a really great album ender. I, I think it's a really good song and it, it's on the greatest hits. Wasp Greatest Hits, I think that came out in around 97. I think it's a really perfect album ender. And a, honestly, a really good song. The Torture Never Stops. I'm sure we all have these lyrics written down. Bang, bang, <laughs> banging in your head. Yeah. You're banging on the walls. Uh, my thought time just popped up and I my uh, timer just popped up. So I had to go off course there. Hang, hang, hanging up yourself. You're hanging by your balls and you, you die, but no one care, hears or cares and hope it's the rope that keeps you tied in knots. That is so badass. It's a horror movie right here. And it's, you know, less about sadomasochism and more just about like a, a, a kidnapping and a murder tying someone up and, and a very strong theme there, the, you know, kind of mirroring the horror that we would see kind of from the day, you know, slasher films and stuff like that. The Torture Never Stops uh, is going to win this one for me. What do you guys think? Chuck, start with you. 
Yeah, I mean, there was another part of the lyrics on there. Sucks, sucks, sucking at your life. Your master sucks the juice. I mean, it's just like, it's just no wonder. I mean, he must look back. If he is really a truly a Christian now, he must look back on these lyrics and just cringe. I mean, this is some really just nasty stuff. But yeah, then the sex drive, another song about sex. Uh, so I, I would go with the uh, the torture never stops. It's just it's so like pushing the boundaries, especially at that time in the early eighties. I mean, that was like really risque. So pretty crazy yeah, with you. And Aaron, you've already taken the cassette out by now. So probably <laughs> not going to yeah. be a sex drive fan. Well, honestly, you know, they, they uh, could have left sex drive and, and taken out the one that I'd take the cassette out at, and they could have had a better record, but uh, no, <laughs> no complaints, man. Uh, no, the torture never stops. Yeah. That's a, that's a horror movie script right there i mean they could just call it the movie the torture never stops and use these lyrics as the movie you're correct chuck uh you know that's a perfect uh another perfect uh example of blackie's lyricism there man i mean the guy uh where do you go in your mind to get that morbid and you know to choose the right words they're so this descriptive you know it's brilliance man so yeah I'm going, the torture never stops. Well, this theme would kind of continue because they would have um, a song, a scream until you like it, which would wind up in the Ghoulies 2 soundtrack. So this was, uh, and they wrote that specifically for the, for that movie. And so, it, you know, it, it was, is it really much of a stretch to consider Wasp and, and horror movies and just how, what a perfect marriage that is? Like, it, especially for the time in the eighties, the in, overindulgence, the look, the, all the stuff that Wasp embodied, it's a horror movie right there in these lyrics. Perfect. It was a perfect marriage. And that's why I love Wasp. I like visual bands, damn it. Yeah. I like bands that I look at and I'm just like, I don't, I don't know what this is. It might scare me. It might enthrall me, but like, this is not somebody that I could just go down to the club by my house and see, I, I you know, in t-shirts and jeans. I, that's why I love Wasp. And that's why I always will. Yeah. My sentiments exactly. You know, just the, the look uh, married with the music um it just turned me on as a kid man made me flip my lid and and again just solidified that i want to do that i want to be that you know <laughs> and that's why i was in a glam band wearing makeup and and trying to put on crazy clothes and things um yeah i love I guess Wasp, man that raises another good question because uh the reason i uh reached out to you aaron's because i saw you posted in an, in a group about what's the greatest glam metal album and you said 1984 wasp and people were like this isn't a glam album is uh, chuck what do you think is is not the debut is it a glam metal album i would I, I i lean on that it was the line is blurred there's a lot of things i mean it was van halen won a glam album i don't know i mean so i think wasp 1984 fits in there to me yeah i mean you could definitely put it as hair metal because that that's more broader term i think but uh Glam, yeah, I guess. I mean, but some people could even consider like Judas Priest glam. Then you could you could say they're kind of glammed out, big hair, and so yeah, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to it's hard to put thing everything into a perfect category. I mean, it's definitely metal. It's definitely heavy metal. It's it's not pop metal. And to think that this is where Blackie wound up after being, you know, in a band, you know, after being in the New York Dolls, it kind of makes sense. You know, that's why I do consider it glam because Blackie's background of being in the New York Dolls, being influenced by Alice Cooper, being in a band with Nikki Six and stuff like that, like it just, it led him to this direction. And man, and I, I think that, um, do we notice much of difference in the drumming? That's the one thing I want to ask you guys before we get, get off here is the drumming between, okay, we had Steve Riley, of course, um, on The Last Command. And I think that he's a great drummer. We've seen what he's done since then. Uh, no complaints there. But Tony Richards, who hasn't really been seen much since on that first record, man, I think it's iconic. What do you guys think about the, the drum sound? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say that Tony Richards' tone is much more thunderous and, and thick. Uh, the Last Command drum tone to me, the snare sounded a little thinner. Um, you could tell that they were trying to go for a little more of a polish on the last command. Uh, but that drum tone on the debut record, man, is just monstrous. Those toms, I mean, it's just can't, can't get better than that, man. Yeah, I would almost compare it to like Steven Adler on Appetite versus mm. like Matt Sorum on The Illusions. Like it's kind of that similar 
it's something about like the swing there's there is like not to make a joke but seriously i feel like there's more cowbell on the first one there, there is like a little bit of cowbell that you hear on certain songs and just a little like he's having a little bit more fun and, and it, like you said not as polished i think it's more raw and i kind of like that better yeah, I agree. I, and I thought that about the guitar tone too, as I mentioned earlier. So I think that, that there's something to that. And like Aaron said, the production. So before we go, um, favorite Wasp album, I think, I think for all of us, uh, Wasp debut obviously was the reigning champion. I think Chuck and I had, uh, you know, three or so songs that, uh, that we preferred from Last Command, but overwhelmingly uh, Wasp's debut. I think Aaron put it best when you said it's like lightning in a bottle, even though I think Wasp did a lot of great things in their career. It's, I consider Wasp's debut almost a mirror image to Motley Crue's, uh, you know, Too Fast for Love. Mm. You never quite capture that raw energy and just hungry sound that you get from bands of that time. To me, that they're kind of one and the same. Do you guys have a favorite album aside from the debut? Starting with you, Chuck, do you have a Wasp album that stands out to you that's, you know, maybe just a tier below or right up there? Um, gosh, that's a tough one. I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I'm more, I was more familiar with the greatest hits, so I don't know if I've gone through all the other albums, album by album, uh, maybe the Crimson Idol one. I feel oh, like that great. was kind of more when I got, became a fan. So probably around that, that time would have, would have kind of been more, I don't know if I listened past that much. Aaron, what about you? Headless children, anything like that? No, I would, out? I would usually, uh, run, run to the last command. You know, it's, it's not that, uh, when you got to compare two two albums, um, you know one's gonna win. But I think that they were they were just it was it was an extent. The Last Command was an extension of the debut, and and there's things that are great in the Last Command still. Great songwriting, st still great songs. Um, but the production to to me sounded just a little thinner. And then I started to kind of wane out of the Wasp thing after that. Sure. You know, started yeah, moving I, on to other types of I, stuff. I, but those two records, man, I mean, you know, that that is Wasp to, to me. Perfect. I'm glad we did those two albums. It's a great comparison, guys. Can't thank you enough for being a part of this. Aaron, we can't wait to see Y&T out there on the road. And again, I hope everybody will go check out uh, your new newest single, which is Live For Today. It's awesome. We, we talked about it. It's in the On The Road To Rock archives, our interview that we did about your career and about your everything that's got coming up. Chuck, you're you're the best, man. Oh, <laughs> Chuck Shoot Podcast. Check it out. It's easier Thank to you. remember than something like On The Road To Rock. Just His name's Chuck Shoot. <laughs> great there name. Thank we, you. I mean, great stuff, guys. We'll Thank have you. To, we'll have to do this again sometime. Had a blast. Thank you guys again so much. And we'll uh, have you, to all catch up again soon. Thanks, all right. Chuck. Thanks for Thanks, having Clint. us on. You bet. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.